welcome to Hard Talk India. In the run-up to the election campaign, we embark on a series of interviews with top leaders of the three main parties contending for power. The first this week is with the Chief Minister of West Bengal. After 22 unbroken years in power, what is the record of the Communist Party? And as Marxism recedes internationally, can it continue to buck the trend in India? To answer those questions, Jyoti Basu. Mr. Basu, you're the longest serving head of government in India. Yet at the same time, there's a whole new generation of voters who can't remember a time when you weren't chief minister, who can't remember a time when communists weren't in government, and they are bored. They want to change. How do you respond to that? No, uh, you are quite right. Uh, generations come, new generations, and some of them know what is happening, they study what has happened earlier. Some of them don't, they don't understand. It is our job as the Marxist Communist Party to teach them, tell them about our history of the country, of the party, of the parties, and uh, so on. But they turn around and they say that after 22 years in power, the communists have run out of steam. The engine has run into the ground. We want to change. No, but what change? Is it for the better or the worse? If it is for the better, we are the only uh, organization, the, not only the CPIM, but the leftists, as you say, the left front. What's wrong with change for the sake of change? Isn't that the essence of democracy? No, but th that is the uh, excess of democracy. That is the wrong thing. Change for change for what? Uh, that is what we are trying to raise the consciousness of the people. Because as you say, it happens sometimes. The people say, all right, we have seen these people for 22 years. Now let us have a change. But for what? What is the program? Why change? You're saying and that if there that is change no is necessary for the better, then it is only we, the, the, we are the only instrument which, which can do that. You're saying there is no alternative to the communists in Bengal? Absolutely. Absolutely no alternative? Absolutely. At okay. the moment. I don't know later on. Let me, let me compare your record with that, say, of a small state in the northwest like Punjab. Your state per capita income is 50% of Punjab's, your literacy is less, your infant mortality is more, yet you're a communist state and Punjab is by no means a communist state. How do you explain that disparity? No, but you should compare not with that because uh, the comparison should be with what was there in West Bengal for these 50 years or 27 years of Congress rule and then uh, you try to find out what has happened during the last 20 years. But Chief Minister, that's 22 history. Years. Today's generation... So there was nothing in West Bengal. As when the Congress government was there, there were no land reforms, land belonged to the uh, big landlords and so on. So we have been going according to a program which we set before us uh, for the people during the elections and concentrating there. And there are enormous improvements have taken place. We are the first now in many respects if you compare us now with uh, all India. Quite right, you did land reforms, you handed down power to Pachayats, and the young generation concede that. But the young generation add that for the last 15 years, or 10 years, they've been resting on their laurels. Let me give you an example. Your education minister, Kanti Biswas, has actually said in public that for the last 10 or 11 years, not one new primary school has been opened by the government. That's almost an embarrassing fact. I don't know the uh, time, whether 10 or 5 years, but it is true. For, I know for about 8 years, we could not appoint any teachers because of a case which was in the High Court. Brought in by some people, instituted a case, and it took the High Court 7 years, or 8 years, I think, to give the judgment in favor of us. But now things have changed. I think that happened 2 years back. And therefore now we are, have to recruit thousands of teachers, we have to establish new schools and so on. We made education free up to the higher secondary stage, but schools were not there, it is true, in some areas. And in fact, but not because just it that, is people not because say, of our fault, but, uh, but the case. But the young people say that he came to power determined to eradicate illiteracy, and he's stopped doing so. Today, the illiteracy in Bengal is higher than Punjab, and Bengal used to be I don't the know fountain head of Indian literacy. During the last census, what there was, the figures during the last census in education, 
There's an increase of 11% during the last four years. But compared to the increase in Punjab, it's smaller. That's the comparison. No, no, no. I don't know Punjab, but now it is about 78% uh, literacy. Now we have got a two years program for uh, full literacy in the state before the next census operation start. Chief Minister, let me give you another example. Once upon a time in the 40s, 50s, even in the 60s, Calcutta was a center of learning. People came from all over India to colleges here, particularly to the economics faculty. Today, students of economics leave Calcutta because you cannot get a good degree here. That's an example of the sort of stultification, the tiredness that's setting in. No, no, but this I do not know because today, as far as numbers go, about quality I'll come later, but numbers go, there never has been such numbers who are going to schools, colleges, you've set up 100 new colleges in the last few years, we have set up just now 12 engineering colleges, we were rather late, there's no doubt about that, but uh, in the private sector we are doing it now, after having the government having done so, we are setting up a model uh, law school like in uh, Bangalore. Yes, but don't you see the danger, you've expanded the number of colleges and schools in the first 10 years of your time, right. but the quality has gone down. So the cream of your students, the cream of your intelligence, of which you were so proud, is now going but elsewhere. quality has not gone down everywhere. I don't know how you uh, compare, because I find from some figures, one or two years, that on the, in these All India examinations, which is held in uh, Delhi for research scholars, we stand first. Let me give you another example of what people say is the stultification, the tiredness that's setting in in Bengal. You have, unfortunately, one of the highest urban poverty rates in India. Yet, if you look at the amount of money you spend on development in your budget, it's 60% of the national average and it's less than half the, of what is spent by Haryana. Now, Surely a communist state dedicated to eradicating poverty should be spending double Haryana, not half Haryana. No, no, but uh, Haryana, having done all that, goes on losing elections. But there must be something in West Bengal where the people are satisfied, because we win elections. Absolutely, Mr. Basi, you put your finger on the point I was trying to come to. You made my point for me. You win elections, your critics say, because you have a well-oiled, well-managed election machine, not because of the development you're doing. In the last 10, 15 years, the communists are tired, but they win because they've got a slick, efficient, effective machine. But that is not true. If the people do not vote for you, however much oiled machine you have, you cannot win. That is my experience. And I've been at this game since 1952, or 46, if I may put it that way. But there's also something and else I can put to you, sir. You are perhaps the most committed communist in the country. Everyone grants you your own personal integrity. And yet, if you look at the human development indices of Bengal, they are much worse than Punjab, they are worse than Haryana, and you turn around and you say, what sort of communism is this? No, no, but uh, I don't know. All comparisons I cannot do just now. I haven't got the figures and so on. But I think what you are talking about is a few years earlier. Now, as I told you, things have changed. Did you know that during the last four years, there was an 11% increase in literacy in West Bengal? Now it's 78%. And as I said, we have got a program within the next two years, when the census comes, there will be no uh, illiteracy. I grant you the 11% increase in literacy, but Similarly, in the same in the case, corresponding period, the increase in literacy in Punjab and Haryana, just to stick with those two examples, was 14 and 15%. Therefore, in comparative well, terms, well, young, your young voters but, say, uh, Mr. You know, Basu is not running fast enough. But you know where we started when we came in. So it took us a little time, to, because we concentrated on other areas, like land reforms, I don't know what Haryana has done about that or Punjab has done about that and the distribution of land and all that which was there from, right from the first plan. You don't concede the point I'm making that in terms of eradicating illiteracy, in terms of removing poverty, in terms of providing health, communism and the communist government have not really been able to even tackle half the problem. No, no, we, we have tackled the problem in the sense that we put out a program before the people during the elections. And I think 90% of that we have implemented, we have been implementing. But we had priorities. 
there were no schools, there was no panchayats, there was nothing being done in the countryside and so on. So we concentrated there because we had our difficulties in the cities because the central government wouldn't give permission to industrial to set up industries here. When the license Raj was there. So you're saying now, you were thwarted by the central government. But now, of course, uh, things have changed a bit. Okay, you say things have changed, and there's no doubt that in the last five, six years, in particular in the 90s, the government has some considerable successes. But the problem with those successes, when I look at them, is they're not the product of Marxist policies. To me, they look like the product of market policies. Let me give you an example. You very successfully tackled the electricity problem in Calcutta, but you did it by privatizing. Now, that's a market solution, not a Marxist solution. No, no, privatizing means what? You see, we are not a republic of West Bengal. We have to go by the constitution. There are a lot of impediments in it. We have to go by the India government's policies, the planning commission, and so on and so forth. So within that, we tell the people, we don't bluff them to get votes. We tell them, mislead them. We don't never mislead them. We tell them we can't bring about fundamental changes. Even very big changes are difficult because of this. Uh, the way the central government behaves with us, center state relations and, and so on. The chief minister handing over the but, Calcutta but Electricity Board to the Goenkas was not part of a manifesto. As soon as the uh, freight equalization was uh, removed on iron, steel and coal, as, as soon as this uh, licensing policy went, we have got offers of 42,000 crores of rupees for Well, yes, let's look at how those offers come. Every year you and the West Bengal Industrial Corporation make ceaseless efforts to attract investment and in the last four years you have been attracting investment but the irony is that you're going back to the same industrialists to the same foreign investors who you used to criticize 20 years ago and who you frightened away 20 years ago today you're going back to them to bring them back what is the mean i we never you have never, never criticized our industrialists or foreigners who have left everything and went away we want them. This is in the period of globalization. You want them today, we, we but in the early years, your first labor minister, Mr. Subodh Banerjee, is on record saying, and I'll quote, sir, whenever there is a problem between workers and employers, our party will side with the workers. That sort of message <laughs> led to a flight of capital, led to a flight of industry. No, that is not the only factor, but you are right. Because the first time we came into the government, uh, 67 I think, and our labor uh, minister was there, he did make that kind of statement. We have learned from that, that was a mistake. And, but what do we say now? We tell the trade unions, I've been a trade unionist myself for so many years, which we never used to say, we tell them now, that you must, your demands and all that are there, parliamentary democracy, you have the right, but you have obligations also. What about production and productivity? Do you leave everything to the management? You have to take interest in that. Never have we as trade unionists earlier said this, because the new situation is arisen. Chief Minister, you've made a very, very important concession. You agree that when you first came to power in 67, and more importantly, 77, mistakes were made. Certainly, certainly. There's no doubt about it. We learnt a lot from those mistakes. And one of the biggest mistakes was the attitude of hostility to employers. No, there were so many others, you see, that we didn't understand quite. And in that euphoria, which took place when we came into the government, uh, I think some extreme things were uh, said and done also. But like gharal, for instance, that has become an English word now. We have banned all that. But at that time, that was much in favor with so the So what you're saying is, Stick with us as a governing party because we have learned from our mistakes Certainly. and we now know what to do. You are right and the people are understanding that from their own experience. But this is the first public admission that you made mistakes. No, no, so many are every public meeting I say. There are negative features. We made mistakes, but we never hide anything from the people. We go to them, tell them what are the mistakes, why are the mistakes, try to correct them. But you see what I'm saying? That your successes are based upon not just an acceptance and an admission that you made mistakes, but they are also based upon new and dramatically different policies. Today, you are market friendly. You are not just a Marxist. I have to be. Even Marxists are market friendly, as I said. They say socialists 
market uh, economy. But I can't say that because I am working in a uh, uh, parliamentary system where there is uh, capitalism, feudalism still exists. So uh, we have to accept the reality. That is Marxism. And that the is reality what is the Marxism as science. The reality is that you can't ignore the market. I have to work within the market. Absolutely. I said I am not the Republic of West Bengal. But then there's something. I am a part of India. So you're a very different sort of Marxist to the man you were in 77? Not at all. Marxism being a science, if you make mistakes in your analysis, then you go wrong as the Soviet Union, then some Eastern Europe. But if you realize you made a mistake and correct it, then you go right. Yes, of course. So, but the essential mistake but, in the Marxist analysis but, was that the market can be ignored. We were supposed to have dictatorship of the proletariat. We don't. You are right. At the time, it was that, that we didn't talk about the market. But all that has changed after the Second World War. And Marxists have taken note of that. And those people who have taken note of that have succeeded in the new economic policies. Okay, then let me ask you a blunt question. If Marxism has changed, and you're reveling in the change, you're admitting the change, why do you carry on calling it Marxism? It's social democracy. Why don't you say it? No, no, it is not social democracy. We don't accept social democracy, of course. We can't even have that kind of a program uh, in, this, in a particular state where we have power, where in the government. Mr. Basu, let me tell you what industrialism has got to say. Socialism is quite different from what is social democracy, as you Calcutta, uh, call it. Calcutta industrialists say, Jyoti Basu has to insist he's a Marxist because it would be embarrassing for him not to use the word. But there's nothing Marxist about the man any longer. Maybe there was when he first but, came, not today. <laughs> today, he has tamed the unions, they say. Today, he is bringing foreign and Indian capital back. Today, he is a social democrat. How? I'm not even a social democrat. I have a common minimum program for the people in which all this is there what has to be done with industry, agriculture... So you're hung up on using uh, the word Marxist. But the word Marxist the is important. The major mistake you are making uh, in this, when you ask me this question is that it is not Marxism, it is a science. And science means that you have to accept the change if, if it shows that something goes wrong. Marxism as a science, Mr. Basu talked about the crisis of capitalism. That crisis hasn't happened. It talked about ever-increasing and ever-worsening trade cycles. Those are not happening. It talked about the collapse of the state. The state is stronger than ever before. No, no, no. It talked about dictatorship of the proletariat. It's not happening. That is what you are absolutely right. That is why I say that China, Vietnam, even Cuba to, uh, in that sense, uh, they have understood the reality. That is what Marxism tells you. Try and understand the reality. The reality is and that Marxism didn't work, but, but under the disguise of calling it but Marxism, we are now a social democrat. That cap despite the fall of the Soviet Union and so on, capitalism is not the last word in civilization. That we don't believe. We still believe socialism is. But okay, reform, you, reformed socialism. If you are, now I say you're back, you've once again given a hint, reformed socialism, not Marxism any longer. No, no, that is reformed Marxism. So in a new situation, when something happens... Mr. Basu, this is like Alice in Wonderland. China, for instance, swears by Marxism-Leninism. Yes, and there's absolutely nothing Marxist but, about the Chinese economic policy. There's absolutely everything there. But they say we are a backward country. It will take us 50 years to approach the uh, bigger capitalist countries. These are, real, these are real Marxists. Mr. Basu, someone listening to you will say, he's an extremely clever man using words, but it's a bit like Alice in Wonderland. Humpty Dumpty once said, I use words to mean what I want them to mean. So if I'm going to call socialism and reformed socialism and market-oriented socialism the same as Marxism, then the world has to accept no, it is Marxism. See, like, you know, I'll give you an example, I think you know about it, that when the communists came to power in uh, the Russia, Lenin, after two or three years, he was still alive then, after two or three years, he said, this is not working. What Quite right. Not? The NEP was a retreat N. from you're, socialism. You're right. It was a retreat from socialism. It was a retreat exactly. from Marxism. But what is wrong there? He so said, you're retreating no, no, from Marxism? I quoting Lenin. Lenin said it's the retreat. We have to go one step back to go two steps so forward. So can you accept that you're but going you are one step back? quoting that part. But can you that accept you're going one step back? No, no. Here we have nothing to do with socialism. In West Bengal or Kerala, Sibur, what have we to do with socialism? Okay, let me, let me put we it are like working this. in a capital state. Let me put it like this. Do you still believe, after 22 years of experience, 
and after accepting your mistakes and after changing your ways and after inviting back the people that left, do you still believe that Marxism has a future in India? Absolutely. All over the world it has a future. You believe Including that... the Western countries. Then explain There something. is no other alternative. That because as I said, capitalism cannot be the last system in civilization. Let me, let me come to the elections. If your party is in a position to be part of the next government, Wait, will you in, be a candidate for Prime Minister? In the centre or here? In the centre. The centre I don't know. Our policy is very clear. At one time, as you know, that uh, there was a dis uh, debate, a dispute in our party when the twelve parties asked us to join the government and to uh, myself being the Prime Minister. We called a meeting of the Central Committee twice. Majority refused. They said it would be incorrect. We thought I was in the minority, my general secretary was the minority, we thought that it would be correct. But then we have to go by the party majority decision. But then, before the last party congress, the central committee meeting, this was just before the last election, held in Calcutta, a very clear united decision was taken, that if another such opportunity arises, we shall have to rethink. And if it arises... This is Marxism. After, and if it arises after the October elections, Will your party be a part of the government? What's your view? We What's consider, we shall, be, uh, we shall see what the situation is. We want a secular government. As you say, left, democratic, secular government we want in Delhi. If such a thing happens by various combinations, that looks like it to me now, no party or group will get a, a majority. Okay, and if... And, if and then if you. such an opportunity again comes, we should certainly rethink that is our decision of the party congress. And if... Politicians of other parties come to you and say, Jyoti Babu, we need you as Prime Minister. Will you be there and winning? My age is a factor, but more than my age, my health is a factor. I'm trying to improve. We communists, we just don't give up. So, so I don't health permitting, if you are required, you will be there as Prime Minister. There's no doubt about it, if such a situation arises. Your son has said in an interview that my father will retire on his 86th birthday, that's July the 8th, 2000. Can you confirm or refute that? No, no. I, I, how, how can my son, he's a businessman, how, how can he say when I retire? So you're refuting it? I'm refuting it, but I'm saying that this has been on the agenda. Okay, if, if you do happen to become either part of the government or prime minister, let me put the one most critical issue you're likely to face to you. What steps would you take to sort out the present situation with Pakistan? Well, as you know, that uh, it's not only a question of our party, but we Indians, we don't want quarrel or dispute with any other neighbor. We want friendly relations with Pakistan, Bangladesh, Southeast Asia, and all that. That has been our foreign policy. Yes, but what will you do to affect and achieve that? What we, you see, if Kashmir is brought into the question, there can be no discussion. Because the line of control was decided, I think in 1971 or so, similar agreement. It's all so, delineated there. So if Jyoti Basu becomes and, Prime Minister, and Kashmir I say, will not be discussed I, with Pakistan. I shall talk to you, as I have talked, solve the, uh, we have solved the problem of the water problem in Bangladesh. We shall talk to Pakistan. There are very many issues on which can, we can collaborate. We but can, you are saying very clearly that if you become Prime Minister, Kashmir, Kashmir will not be a subject of discussion. Uh, but it can be only between us and Pakistan. Uh, you will discuss Kashmir? It can be, but no third party intervention is necessary. So in other words, you will stick to the same line and same policies as the present BJP government? BJP government, I don't know what it is doing. They have already decided to sign the CTBT. And will you sign the They are bringing in the Americans. Will you sign the CTBT? I we will not. Will you continue with the same economic policy? No. You will not BJP continue economic, with economic policies liberalism? and Congress economic policies are the same. We disagree with them. But the economic policy you follow in Bengal is exactly the same as the Congress I one under Dr. Manmohan Singh and the that. BJP one of today. I can't help it. If I was the Republic of Bengal, I would do something else. Ah, so the second you become Prime Minister, you will change the policy at the center and then change the policy in Bengal as well. If, if that is, if that comes about. So you're saying to very, me very that if good. Jyoti Basu becomes Prime Minister, Jyoti Basu, the liberal reformer that I see in front of me, will suddenly change into a classic Marxist that he used to be. I should certainly not be blind followers of the IMF and the World Bank. I have some self-respect left, and Indians do have. So self, you'll be tougher? Self-respect. You'll be tougher? Yes, a blind uh, uh, obedience to them is not necessary. 
on that note chief minister thank you very much for speaking to us thank you